Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I did this V-split butterfly holographic with some leopard print zipper style tumbler. And of course, you guys know I will list all of the supplies and everything that I use in today's video down in the description box as well as some discount codes to save you a little bit of extra money. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So as always, I am starting with a 20 ounce hog tumbler today. I have just spray painted that cup with a flat black spray paint and I have my beautiful holographic like stripe leopard print butterfly design. This was part of the original holographic pack from my Asia Creations. She is or did just launch a bunch of new holographic vinyl designs. So I definitely encourage you to check out her website. Lots of gorgeous things over there as far as holographic vinyl if you love this look. So I am just separating my triangled sections to be able to do this as a v-split style tumbler so the way that i typically do this is just meet each uh, section of the vinyl corner to corner making it half a triangle and then doing it in the opposite direction making it four separate triangles i'll then just cut along that folded sectioned area to cut all of the triangles separately and then i like to just choose which of the ones i'm going to be using for the design for today i wanted to make sure that the section that i was using was going to have the bottom butterflies looking like an upright direction with the horizontal lines still and so I wanted to make sure that I had grabbed the correct triangle out of the four to make sure that I had that so that it kind of gave you know a really a really cute look like the original vinyl design. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the little bit of excess that was at the top of the vinyl here and then we'll go ahead and get this placed onto the cup. So I'm going to show you the same way that I typically like to apply my vinyl when I'm doing a v-split. So I always start with measuring it on the cup making sure that wherever the v is that it is straight and that if I am to cross the two sections across the back that where those cross and that v at the back is going to be in the same section as it is in the front. If it's not that typically means then that your vinyl section is not straight. So then just take it off and readjust and then I'll go ahead and take a little bit of painters tape and just tape down one section and side and try and only work with one side at a time that typically is the easiest I find for myself once you get that one corner you know large three inch section kind of anchored down at that point then you can take off the rest of the tape that's holding the vinyl down and then just use your squeegee tool to squeegee on the rest of the vinyl really quite easily with the backing now off, I can go ahead and just pull over any of the excess vinyl over the top. This vinyl is not a vinyl that is going to give you a lot of stretch and a lot of give, so definitely be careful with this. Most of what I did here was just use my thumb or finger to kind of push the vinyl over the edge. Of course, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to get any wrinkles along the vinyl edge as I was pushing it over the rim of the cup. And I definitely would encourage to use a brand new craft knife blade when you're going to be cutting into this vinyl. Because when you make those that cut across the top section, you want to make sure that you're getting a really straight edge and straight cut and nothing jagged. Because jagged, that's going to cause a little bit of issues when you go to epoxy and could leave some sharp edges which might need additional sanding later on. So we're going to go ahead and get the top top edge just trimmed up. Make sure everything is nice and smooth up here and that the vinyl is nicely adhered at the top rim there. And then we can go ahead and add some painter's tape to the on top of the vinyl here. That way we can get into glittering our black base here. So I'm just going to take my painter's tape and just go ahead and get the edges of the vinyl covered up. That way I don't have to be so careful with when I'm applying my Mod Podge since I tend to make a mess. And so after I get that covered up, we're going to go ahead and use some Mod Podge and a paintbrush to go ahead and get our glue on and of course our glitter. Now that we have our vinyl protected, we're going to go in with some Mod Podge here. And the glitter I'm going to be using today is Obsidian. So Obsidian is a black, more medium cut glitter. And it is from my Asia Creations. You can find a link and discount code down in the description box. And so this glitter has, it's not a true black. It has a green and purple color shift to it. So it's different from Death by Glitter, which I believe I've used on my channel before here, which is another really pretty black glitter that gives more of a sparkle finish and not so much that sort of very dark almost impossible to tell it's glitter look with other black glitters but this gives more of a purple to green shift whereas death by glitter 
definitely gives more of a holographic shift and sparkle to the shine. So I'm going to go ahead and get that thin coat of Mod Podge applied to my cup. I want to really make sure to pay attention to get enough Mod Podge on here so I can go in with just one coat of glitter here. Then go in with my Obsidian Glitter, getting everything covered that was covered in Mod Podge. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the tape and let this dry. So I want this to dry fully and then I will brush off any of the excess glitter and take it outside to spray seal it. So I'll spray seal it with some clear gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. That's usually my go-to sealer. I did though run into a little bit of an issue here. I actually oversprayed my cup, which is very possible. And with some glitter, sometimes you'll get a little bit of bleeding, which I definitely got a little bit of bleeding onto my vinyl with this glitter specifically. So something to be mindful of because I could tell I was going a little heavy handed after everything had dried. So this is the spray of colors that we're going to be using for the leopard print section of this cup. All holly are all neon colors from Maisha Creations, and I'll list them right here on the screen. I've used these before. This was actually in its own pack, and I think that you can get them in their own bundle or a similar neon bundle on the Maisha Creations website. But we're going to go ahead and get started with adding our leopard print spots. So you guys know um, that I have showed plenty of times on my channel how to do hand painted leopard print. You don't have to do it this way. Um, and I think this would look just as beautiful if you just chose to do neon vinyl in leopard print in all of these neon colors. I think that would look really pretty as well. I chose to go with glitter because that just is the easiest. I never have all the colors that I need when I want to use just vinyl typically. So it's just much easier to do it in this way. So I'm going in with my pink glitter first there. And that was flaming Flam or majestic flamingo. We're going to go in with the yellow, um, the yellow paint here. And all of the paint that I did mix into the medicine cups, I did also put Mod Podge in there. So it's a paint and Mod Podge uh, combination there to make sure I get a little extra stick, if you will, as I add my glitter over top. So I'm going to go through and just do all of the colors really quickly, really just trying to follow the pattern of a neon rainbow all the way down the length of this cup. So taking my time, making sure that I have enough leopard print all over the cup, I'm going to cover this entire section in the back here with the leopard print. And then you're actually going to see after I put all of the leopard print on here, I end up changing gears and not really actually liking how just the leopard print looks so I decide to go back and add the inner color which normally if you guys have seen my leopard print videos before where I do the inner color I always start with the intersection and then move outward in this regard I ended up doing it backwards or opposite and that was simply because I had decided afterward that I thought the leopard print would look better for this cup if I had the inner section um, of this leopard print apparent on the cup as well so I just went through and did the orange and that orange is the papaya color. So we're going to go through and I'm just going to speed up the rest of this clip because it is doing the same thing. We're just making those C-shaped shapes as well as those parentheses C-shape and a dot. So all the things that I've said before, I will list down in the description box a couple of videos that really do help. For those of you who may be scared to try leopard print in a hand painted fashion and show you some really easy quick tips that you can certainly practice i definitely feel like leopard print is one of those things you have to practice it is not something that really comes naturally at least it didn't for me maybe it will for you um, but i do find once you've practiced a few times and really get the hang of it and use sort of a picture for reference doing hand painted leopard print spots really does become really easy of course with that practice and patience so now you'll notice that I've gone back and I'm using just plain Mod Podge here and I'm going to go ahead and go into the intersection of all of those leopard print spots, do a little dab of some glue there, and then I'm going to go over this and that Mod Podge with Disco Ball from my Asia Creations. It's a holographic uh, silver, which really plays in nicely with the holographic vinyl that we have and used for this design. I really just felt like it needed something else to really tie the back of the cup with the vinyl that I had chosen for this design. So I felt like adding the holographic silver to the inner section of all the leopard print really did help to bring sort of the whole cohesive look together, in my opinion. So after I do go through and add all of this silver to all of the leopard print on the cup I do end up going back and doing a second coat of all of the neon leopard print because it looked a little funny having the spots on top versus the spots being kind of hidden under the outer neon colors so I went back around and did a second coat of glitter around all of the neon leopard print spots really just give it 
to give it that true leopard print look that I'm used to seeing to be able to kind of finish this off. So this is what everything looked like after I did my second coat of glitter. Then I'm going to go ahead and get this on to the turner. So today we are going to be using Flynn Sisters Epoxy, but we're using her fast set. So I know you guys haven't seen me use this yet, but I wanted to show you that it is just as easy to use as the Artist Cure. So I've gone ahead and I've mixed 15 mls of each part a and part b and then i am going to stir it just like i would the regular artist cure so from like three to five minutes or so until everything is completely mixed thoroughly there's no ribbons then go ahead and apply just like normal but i love how quick this stuff dries i was able to get that dried and cured and onto my second coat of epoxy, epoxy within two hours and then i was able to pull that off the turner to do sanding which is what i'm doing right now within like six hours i think i waited another four hours after that second coat and and then I literally was ready to go into my sanding. So really quick and easy product to use. So if you're familiar with the Artist Cure, I definitely encourage you to grab the fast set as well. I really do feel like it is something that you guys are going to enjoy. And of course, you guys know I do have a discount code for her website down in the description box down below in case you want to check out Flynn's Sister Supply Shop Epoxy or maybe even her rhinestones. So now at this point, I've gone ahead and I've sanded anywhere that I've needed to sand, which was mostly the top and bottom rim, just to make sure that I didn't have any sharp glitter poking up and to make sure I have that fine line of stainless steel around the top rim. I'm going to clean this off with a little bit of 91% rubbing alcohol and get ready to apply the zipper to this. So this is a zipper that I literally just picked up at any craft store. I think I grabbed mine from Joanne Fabric, I want to say. I ended up going like zipper crazy at one point and bought like 15 different colors of zippers. You don't have to do that. You don't have to, to do what I did. Um, but I just was kind of in the mood to try zipper tumblers. And so I decided to grab a bunch and still have a few left. But I definitely do feel like I should have just stuck to like white and black zippers i wish they would have had holographic ones because that would have been really cool for this um but i feel like i definitely gravitated more towards just the white and black in the designs that i've created or would have looked better with either a white zipper or a black zipper because those colors of course match anything um but once you get your zipper all you're going to want to do is you're going to cut off kind of the section of fabric that is on your zipper that you would normally use to adhere the two sections or two pieces of fabric to you know to create a zipper on a regular item. So we're going to cut that off because we don't need that. We're not actually going to be sewing this onto fabric. We're actually going to be sort of laying this down onto the cup in a way that is going to obviously adhere to the cup but we don't want that extra fabric because it's going to look a little funny if we have that applied to the cup because we don't have anywhere to hide that so all i've done is i've cut the edges of that fabric off really get in as close as you can to that i kind of go back and forth with my scissors i really wish i had grabbed like those little teeny tiny tiny like sewing scissors that probably would have been real helpful with this to get those little tiny fibers and pieces of fabric that are still kind of stuck towards the zipper but get as much of that off as you can you certainly could even try maybe taking a lighter and just burning that fabric off sometimes that works i know it works with ribbons so why not here with this small piece of fabric as well but once you've gotten it um, all of that excess fabric cut off and you have just your zipper here now we're going to go ahead and get this onto the cup and kind of decide how much of the zipper we're going to need this is i think a 16 inch long piece of zipper and so I know I'm not going to need all of it for the size of my cup because my cup is usually about, you know, eight, eight inches tall for a 20 ounce. So we're going to unzip the two zipper sides and we're going to place that zipper section, that zipper clasp right where the point of the V is. I'm going to use painter tape to really sort of lay all of the item, all of the sections of the zipper down. That way I can really determine what part of the zipper at the end I'm going to cut that I won't need. That'll be my excess. So really um, using the painter's tape to sort of tape it down is helpful because then you don't have to try and hold the zipper and also cut the, the excess zipper that you don't need. <laughs> And it really is good for when you're going to then apply the UV resin when you are able to kind of see how everything is going to line up before you apply your UV resin to, to the lines and things to get it adhered. So once I've gotten both sides of the cup uh, just taped down, I then can go ahead and take my scissors. Zipper is really easy to cut with scissors. Certainly don't have to worry about it being difficult. I was really able to, to get this cut really easily um, with my just 
typical scissors I use and have in the craft room. So I just cut those so that I have a perfect V at the back where the two sides of the zipper will match each other at, um, at the tip of the V on the other side of the cup. So once I've done this, I'm going to flip it back around and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get the original black, you know, zip up. I don't know what you call those things. The little, you know, the little tab you hold to, to pull the zipper up. We're going to cut that off. So I'm just using my little wire cutters here that I have for jewelry making. And that really did help get this off. There probably is an actual way to be able to remove these without having to do this, but I couldn't figure it out. And it was taking me way too long for something so simple that I know I could just cut off with my wire cutter and call it a day. So I just snap that section off, but of course I'm leaving the section where the zipper is going to connect there because we are going to add some, uh, our own sort of zipper design to that section. So now before we can move on to doing our final coats of epoxy, we of course need to get this adhered to the cup. So we're just going to use UV resin as the go-to. I would recommend something quick, but you want something strong. So UV resin is probably your best bet as far as getting your zipper adhered because you are going to be able to get that cured and it's going to be able to stay there pretty firmly without any movement. I wouldn't try to use something like, you know, glues or things. That's not really going to hold your zipper in place long enough. Um, you know, it needs something a little bit a little bit stronger, maybe super glue if you really wanted to, but honestly, I do feel like UV resin would be your best bet. It's something you're familiar with using when it comes to epoxy related crafts. So I would just lean towards that since it is a familiar product, then try to use something that maybe you've never used. Certainly if you have other suggestions down below or other things that might work that you've tried, let me know. I'd love to try other products and see how that works. Um, I'm just going to use UV resin because it's something that's familiar to me and something I've used over time and time again. So it just makes the most sense in this craft to use this now. So I'm just going section by section. The smaller sections, the better. Don't go too much with your UV resin. You want a nice thin line under the zipper because you don't want any of that to kind of bubble out and create like a weird, you know, line or rope that is um, along the sides of your zipper. So do a thin line if possible, making sure to not get too much, but enough that is going to help keep the zipper placed down and not allow any epoxy to get underneath the zipper as you're doing your final coats. So I hope that makes sense. Hopefully the video is really able to show you how easy and simple it is to get this applied. I literally cured for like 15 to 20 seconds. It didn't even need the full 30 second cycle to go through to really get it hard and adhered since we're using such a thin amount of UV resin anyway. So just a little bit of that UV lamp really did go a long way. And we're just going to do this on both sides of the cup until we get the zipper placed all the way up to that back section of the V at the top of the back side of the cup. So after that is done, I then will be ready to add our coats of epoxy. So I am going to do my two final coats of epoxy now over the zipper section because again a zipper is metal and so you're going to be able to feel that and so you're still going to feel that even after your two final coats but you want to make sure that there isn't anything sharp of course when it comes to this kind of a design so definitely ensuring that i put this back on the turner and really did a really good set of two final coats of epoxy was important because i wanted to make sure that whoever does purchase this design isn't going to be able to you know poke themselves on something that's sharp and still sticking up and still be able to have that beautiful zipper like look. So here I am doing my final coats of epoxy. I am using Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy. So I went in with 30 mLs for the second to last coat and the final coat of this epoxy. I wanted to use all the epoxy because I wanted to be sure that I was going to have a really good coat of epoxy. I don't think I used the full 30 because a full 30 can't fit on a cup because this is a thicker viscosity epoxy, of course. But I did use pretty close to all of this cup of epoxy here on this, really focusing to ensure that I got a nice layer and nice coat of epoxy over the zipper. Again, making sure that this is going to create a really smooth finish over the zipper and not anything that's sharp or uncomfortable when someone holds it in their hand. Now, as I go along the front section of the cup, I am paying close attention that I don't go over the section that I'm going to apply the final jewelry section to, which is where the zipper clasp will go. So I am being mindful not to get epoxy on that but I am going all the way up to where that section meets and where that the back of that zipper clasp meets the cup 
but I'm not going over that because I don't want to cover up that hole. Otherwise, I won't be able to get my final sections of uh, jump rings and jewelry pieces connected to that section. So take your time with this. The first coat took me a little bit more time than the second coat, certainly. Then go ahead and torch that and, of course, let that fully cure. So two final coats on that. So 24 hours later, here we are back to do the final touches on this cup. So this is what she looks like so far. We're going to go ahead and apply the jewelry. So I got my jump rings and these cute little um, butterfly pieces, uh, jewelry pendants, I would say, from Amazon. I will link them, of course, down in the description box. So I'm going in with kind of a larger jump ring to connect to the zipper clasp. And then I'm going to go in with a smaller jump ring to connect to the butterfly and then connect that to the larger jump ring. Just so that the butterfly does lay flat against the cup and isn't sticking kind of jagged or like looking straight up at you, if that makes sense. Um, I wanted the piece to lay flat, so I did have to do a combination of the two jump rings in order to get it to be something that does lay flat. These little butterfly jewelry pieces are quite fragile, so I know that there's a lot of places that do sell the actual like zipper pendants and things. Um, I know there's some on Instagram that I have seen before. I really wanted a butterfly one, so I didn't find any on any of the shops that I'm used to looking at. So I just went to Amazon and found like a jewelry pendant that was shaped like a butterfly. But these are pretty like thin and flimsy. So certainly being mindful and being careful with them um, is going to be kind of an important for the customer because it is something that potentially could... Um, you know, get bent very easily, I should say. So just be mindful of that. Um, there were other selections on Amazon, but of course, I don't ever know what what is going to be best until it's like in my hand and I see it. I do still think that this was a beautiful look. I don't think I'd change anything about it, but if you're looking for something a little bit more durable, you might look to an actual zipper, you know, clasp pendant type, type style thing versus this jewelry piece that I did choose to go with. So Enough of that. I go ahead and get this attached, of course, to the zipper clasp here. And that is it. That's all I have to do for the final look. Let's go ahead and take it some final pictures of the final results of this cup. So here's the final look for this cup. I love how this came out. I'm glad I was able to show you guys how to apply a zipper to your tumbler. And if you love today's video, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.